Today is November 29, 2016, and my routine for today starts at the budget office. I've been working here since June 21, 2016, and up until now, I'm offering my assistance to them. I have to be here from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and deliver papers that are going to be obligated. I deliver to various law centers like the accounting office. Then, I have to get back to the office immediately because there are many papers that should be delivered and I only have an R. Next part of my schedule is to go to my first class, which is English 7, a public speaking class. I am not one of the speakers today because I was chosen to speak for a culminating activity. But still, I have to pay attention so that I can get an idea as to how I am going to deliver my speech. I have to know the do's and don'ts for a TED Talk speech. Uh, 
having spoon fed us sometimes, but yeah. Uh, they are giving us fun opportunities to be on our own. And then they do not let us to ano, to commit mistakes. But they guide us to the right path. So like yeah, in our country, you know, you know how in, we are like a Philippines is like in a like very like like race, we talk a literary race. Philippines is so you know, down, like the rating. Do you feel like student autonomy is important? How important do you think student autonomy? Is? Um, it is important if we are going to achieve the you know global competence. Then the schools in our country should promote student autonomy. Uh, Next is my Bio 1 class, and I have to press Quok, because my class is at CSM and it's a bit far, and I can't afford to be late. And besides, I got used to walking here and there, so my feet are already trained. Upon reaching the classroom, I have to proceed to the chair in front, because that is my usual seat. It's good to be in front of the teacher, so that I can listen well. Do you have any idea what student autonomy is? Um, for me, student autonomy is um, having free will to choose what you want or choose what you want to do as a student. Do you define student, yeah, we define student, uh, student autonomy as the, as the student taking hold of their own studies, like, you know, being an active student. So, do you feel like, you know, because you know, we know that the Philippines now is like very low in the literary rate, it's literary rate without the international. So, do you feel like encouraging uh, students' autonomy is, you know, important in that aspect? Um, I think, yeah, it is very important because it affects how the student think. And of course, we should practice also student autonomy because um, student autonomy is very, very um, crucial or very, very uh, uh, affects how the student learns and how he should stand about a certain issue of being taught. So, yeah, it's very important. Um, there's this issue that if that student to come, do you think that student to come can be used, like for example professors, can use the student autonomy, promoting student autonomy as an excuse not to teach properly because you know, we just let the students do all of the things on their own. I think, um, about the 
positive and negative side of it. And then he will then let the student think what to stand about. For example, if if um, um, do you I mean the teacher is being withdrawn. He wanted to let the student think critically by um, by practicing student autonomy. So um as a college students, we, all, we have this, we have a lot of um, deadlines, projects, we have a lot of goals. Yeah, and then, do, do you, don't you think that um, adding a promoting a very college students to, you know, be autonomous, is like adding a, adding a burden toward them, putting another responsibility toward them to like, you know, yeah. yes, because you know how we think like you have this, you have you you have this, how do you say this? Everything is imposed. You have rules to follow, so you know you just have to follow that. But in college here we promote this autonomy we promote it. And then uh, aside from some people tend to have problems with their projects because you know you have this liberty to do whatever you want, but then After the class, I have to go back to the office because I usually eat my lunch there. And I have to work too, from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon before heading to my next class, which is Literature 1N. During lunchtime, I allocate 20 minutes for studying or doing unfinished assignments. And today, I have to make a PowerPoint presentation for my report that I will present later in my next class. It is easy since I already know what to put in my PowerPoint and I usually just put three to five words each slide. And when the clock strikes seven, I have to get back to work. The same thing happens. I deliver papers and answer phone calls.
And it's time for my next class, which is Philippine Literature. Today, I, along with my groupmates, have to present what we have discussed during our focus group discussion that we had last meeting. We have to talk about the works that we have chosen. Mine is The Fairy Child by Erwin E. Casilio, and it is a bit difficult to decipher. But I have an idea as to how to relate it with the chosen works of my groupmates. <laughs> Okay, so, di ba, uh, 
Um, it's different talaga if there's something that will really connect you to that person. Like, in photograph or photogenic, it's the garden, but that connects her to that person. Now, how about, um, yeah, how do we think of our memories now? Is it always associated with something that is tangible? Or um, can we not have memories without anything that's concrete, like a picture, or the garden? If without those, would we have a memory of someone? Yes. yes, how? The person in itself, lang. On conversations there. But then that's still, I know, that's still concrete in language nyo. Diba? So, can we think of a memory without associating with something concrete? But can I even look at all of it? And since we have no time anymore, I'll have to present my PowerPoint presentation tomorrow during our makeup class. So now, I'll have to head home, not to end the day's struggles, but to start dedicating the remaining hours for this day to my family. Because, not known to many, I am the cook of the family. So I need to go home to start preparing whatever it is that I have to prepare. And that is how my day goes by.